A lot of the time, the magic of a great photo lies in the editing process. I like to think of editing as a tool to make an image look the way the moment felt. And today I'm going to be sharing some simple but powerful and really cool editing tools with Luminar Neo, who is sponsoring this video. I'm going to show how you can take an image that you already like, maybe that you've already edited, and use a tool that gives it something extra. Now first, I'm gonna be honest here, I was really hesitant to try this software because generally speaking, I don't like learning new software, not for photos, not for videos. I don't have time. It is never convenient for me to stall my workflow, to fumble around with a new software, to try to figure out how to use it. But ever since Luminar Neo came out, I have heard everybody rave about it, specifically about how easy it is to use. It's packed with AI driven tools and tools that condense what would be multiple steps in regular photo editing software to just a slider. So if you can drag a slider, you can do everything in this software. There is no learning curve here. Okay, first let's talk about the magic light tool. I'm going to select the image I wanna use. This is a photo from the Capilano Suspension Bridge Park in Vancouver, BC. If you've never been around the holidays and you live in the area, you have to go, or even if you don't live in the area, make a trip, it's totally worth it. There's a giant suspension bridge, and then there's a whole bunch of little bridges strung up among the trees, and they light them all up for the holidays and it's a really magical experience. Okay, so I select this image and I hit the edit tab and this takes me to a page that has all of these tools on the right hand side. So this has all the basic editing tools you would need like exposure, the color and HSL adjustments, under the mood tab, you can import LUTs and add those. But this isn't the magic of the software. The magic is in the extra stuff. So I'm going to open the magic light tool. Magic light is a brand new extension that uses AI to identify by artificial light sources in a photo, like street lights, holiday lights, and it adds a glowing, twinkling effect. So watch what happens to all of these lights when I increase the intensity slider here. It makes the lights twinkly, and I can adjust the size, make them bigger or smaller, the clarity. I can even adjust the rotation of the beams. How fun is this for holiday photos? This is really nice for street lights too. Here's a photo I took in Jackson Hole last winter and watch the red street lights here. Look at what that adds. You can even adjust the number of beams. You can have a lot of beams. I feel like this looks more natural with a smaller number there. I feel like this is the definition of making an image look the way a moment felt, not only because I have a slight case of astigmatism, so lights at night actually do kind of flare like this, but this was taken on Christmas, it was snowy, it was quiet, there was that magic in the air, and this gives the photo that feeling. Here's another photo I took like eight years ago in Paris. The original image isn't that spectacular. The quality of the image isn't that great. I don't even know what this was shot on, but I know it wasn't a super high quality camera or lens and it was obviously shot at nighttime. But I'm gonna go into the mood tab and add a LUT. This is gonna create a little bit of a split tone effect with the colors. I'm also going to go into the noiseless AI tool to try and combat some of the noise in this photo. And you can choose how intense you want this to be. And then I'm gonna add the magic light tool and it makes the scene come alive with this twinkling. Now you can see on the left side of the Ferris wheel, it caught part of that thinking that it should twinkle, but it didn't get the whole Ferris wheel. So that looks kind of artificial. So I'm gonna go into the brush tool and select erase and I'm gonna draw over that portion of the Ferris wheel just to remove the twinkle there so it looks balanced and a little more real. And look at this before and after. That took a somewhat bland photo and made it something pretty in like 60 seconds. Okay, kind of similar to Magic Light is the Sun Rays tool. I have this photo I took in Cape Town earlier this year. Cape Town is so dreamy and photogenic. And I love this shot with Lion's Head and the winding road at sunset. But something that annoys me about myself is I have a bad habit of forgetting to close my app when I'm shooting a landscape with the sun on the horizon, which robs me of that beautiful sunburst effect you can get. This photo was shot, I believe, at a 2.8 aperture, and you can see over here the sun is just like a bright, blurry blob. 
But if I'd shot this at like F9 or higher, I would have gotten a really nice sunburst there. Like for example, here's a photo I took in Namibia where I did have a high aperture and you can see how beautiful this looks when the sun is peeking out from behind something. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to come down here to the sun rays tool and I'm going to select place sun center, which gives me a little circle that I can drag to where my sun is. Then I'm gonna drag the amount slider to the right and it gives me that sunburst effect. And I think it fits this photo well because it already has a natural sun flare in it. So now from here, I can adjust the intensity, the length of the sun rays to make them longer or shorter, how many sun rays I want. I can also randomize their spacing. I'm also quickly gonna use the erase tool to get rid of this corner foreground. I think this is kind of distracting. So I'm gonna grab the brush draw over that, click erase. So here's the before and here's the after. Really simple, but also adds something to the image to make it pop. Another super cool AI tool is called Atmosphere. And at first glance, I wasn't really wowed by this tool until I realized what the AI was doing. So I have this photo that was taken in Whistler up in Canada a few winters ago, and you can see in the Atmosphere tool, you have these atmosphere qualities you can select. So I'm going to select Fog, and then I'm going to increase the amount slider. Now at first, I just thought this was adding like a white out effect across the image, but then I started playing with the depth slider and I realized that the AI has analyzed the depth of the image and what in the image sits where and is placing the fog appropriately. So when I have the depth low, you can see the fog is all behind me. But as I start to increase the depth, the fog gets closer to me. And then if you watch this part of my blanket right here is where you can really tell, as it gets closer, you'll see the fog starts to come in front of me. The AI knows I'm closer to the camera, so the fog shouldn't be coming in front of me until I adjust the depth to that point. And it knows that the fog intensity in front of me should be less than the fog behind me because I'm closer to the camera versus just blanketing a fog filter over the entire image as a whole. I think this is so cool for moody landscapes, especially winter images. And then because this is a more close up photo, I wanna show you something in the face tool. For this photo, I'm gonna use eye whitening and eye enhancer. So I'm going to add just a little bit of eye whitening, and that's going to brighten the whites of my eyes. And then I'm gonna add some of this eye enhancer tool. And this adds clarity, contrast, definition. I don't even know what all is going on here, but it makes the eyes stand out so much more. It seems to sharpen the reflection in the eyes, but I also think it's very subtle and it still looks realistic. Like it doesn't give you the fake alien eye look that sometimes you can see when people go overboard on the eye editing tools. So here's the before and after with the atmosphere and face tool on this image. And you can see all of your edits you've made to an image up in the edits tab. So if I decide I like the face edits, but not the atmosphere edits, I can go into the atmosphere edits and adjust them or delete them altogether. Next, I'm gonna work on this photo I took of a leopard pouncing in South Africa earlier this year. The moment had potential for a really great photo and it just didn't work out. It happened so fast. The leopard was down in the grass and in a split second, he jumped to pounce on something and I tried to get my lens on him and fire off some shots but the focus is off, there's motion blur, the framing is horrible. So I'm gonna try and salvage this a little bit. So first I'm gonna crop the photo so it looks more intentional. Then I'm going to use the Super Sharp tool. Super Sharp is a new AI extension that's designed to tackle motion blur and missed focus in a photo. And you can choose what strength you want and AI is gonna analyze the photo to figure out what needs to be sharpened. And there, you can see the leopard is sharpened. You can see it on his side, the spots, like there's the before and there's the after. I can also see it on his face, like in his nose, his snout. I will say, I think if I really cropped it on his face, I think it would be like noticeable that I'd used a sharpening effect there. But at the crop that it's at, I think it looks pretty good. And also you can see that the background and the foreground of the image haven't been sharpened. So it's just sharpened the subject of the image, which is way better than a regular sharpening tool, which just sharpens the entire image and doesn't isolate the problem. So those are some of the tools I'm using to upgrade my images right now. I really wasn't sure if this software would be a good fit for me because when I think of AI editing, I think of like crazy space sky replacements and like, I don't know, really 
artificial looking photos and I don't really take or edit those kinds of photos. So I was actually very pleasantly surprised with how simple and fun and totally usable some of these are on everyday regular photos. And there's so much else here I didn't even touch on. They have AI background removal, focus stacking, HDR merge. So check out Luminar Neo. I'll have a link down in the description. They have a holiday offer right now so you can get it before the price increases. It also make a great holiday gift for the photographer in your life. I hope you all are having a wonderful holiday season. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.